Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Nelson for Catholic News Break. Here's what's happening this week in the news. We begin with news from London. A massive Thanksgiving for the 2012 London Summer Olympics was said July 28th at Westminster Cathedral. Archbishop Vincent Nichols of Westminster, the president of the Bishops' Conference of England and Wales, said the athletes competing in the Olympics serve as a reminder to all people to use their bodies to glorify God. He told the 900 or so at the Mass that the human body is beautiful in the eyes of God, even as it grows old, and always should be used to honor God, the Creator of all. The Archbishop noted that St. Paul often used the analogy of runners in a race to urge the faithful to know clearly the true goal in life, the real, eternal prize for which we are striving. And he said if the prospect of Olympic gold can spur a competitor through years of sacrifice and effort, so much more can the constant prompting of God's steadfast love and the pure gold of God's presence for eternity spur us on in our Christian journey. Archbishop Nichols offered a blessing for the athletes competing in the games and asked God to keep them safe from injury and harm. In news now from around the country, a Colorado business owned by a Catholic family won a temporary injunction against enforcement of the Department of Health and Human Services contraceptive mandate. In the ruling, Senior Judge John L. Kane Jr. of the U.S. District Court for the District of Colorado said the HHS mandate has potential for violating the family's religious freedom. He said the government's arguments in favor of the contraceptive mandate are outweighed by the public interest in the free exercise of religion. Kane, however, cautioned that his ruling only applied to this case brought by the five members of the Newland family and their company, Hercules Industries, a manufacturer of heating and air conditioning equipment that has 265 full-time employees in Colorado. It is the first positive outcome in the nearly two dozen lawsuits brought by Catholic dioceses, religious organizations, and employers against the HHS contraceptive mandate, which takes effect August 1st in for health insurance plans that are not grandfathered. Religious organizations that do not qualify for a religious exemption under the administration's four-pronged test have been granted a one-year temporary enforcement safe harbor. Among other things, the test requires exempt organizations to serve and hire only members of their own faith. Matt Bowman, legal counsel for the Alliance Defending Freedom, who represented the Newlands, said that every American, including family business owners, should be free to live and do business according to their faith. He said that Americans don't want politicians and bureaucrats deciding what faith is, who the faithful are, and where and how that faith may be lived out. In news now from around the world, the Syrian conflict continues to rage on, claiming thousands of lives and displacing thousands more. Michael Roy, Secretary General of Caritas Internationalis, spoke with Catholic News Service about the challenges the country is facing and the work the organization is doing to help. The now year-long conflict in Syria has resulted in an estimated 17,000 people killed and 120,000 refugees. Those who flee mostly go to Lebanon, Turkey, and Jordan. The Catholic aid organization Caritas Internationales is one of the largest non-governmental organizations helping these people by providing food, shelter, and medicine. The Secretary General Michael Roy says the situation of Syria is being made worse by arms being brought in from the outside. Right now, um, we are in full war. And this war is fueled mainly by arms being brought to the rebels and the oppositions from outside. And this is not the way to bring peace to that country. There has also been the worry that the spreading violence could cause the Pope to cancel his trip to Lebanon in September. It's expected to be a landmark trip for the different churches in the region, as well as the church's relation with the Arab world. If the war uh, develops, which is the case right now, and I don't think it will stop very easily. Um, there is already war in the northern part of Lebanon where the Sunni and the Alawi people live. You know, the border between Syria and uh, Lebanon on the, on the Mediterranean um, uh, is a border between people of the same uh, tribes. There are also many Iraqi refugees living in Syria that are now returning home after facing a new wave of violence. Over the last years, Caritas Syria has been very active with Iraqi refugees coming from Iraq and staying in 
Syria or going to the West. A new team has been put in place with uh, emergency response programs from January onwards. The situation still carries many question marks for Syrians and their neighbors. In the meantime, Caritas Internationales continues to offer help to the thousands of refugees that continue to flee. In more news now from around the country, Bishop Salvatore Cardellione of Oakland, California has been named as new Archbishop of San Francisco. Pope Benedict XVI accepted Archbishop George Nito Auer's resignation and Bishop Corleone's appointment was announced in Washington July 27. Archbishop Niederauer, who is 76 years old, had headed the San Francisco Archdiocese since 2005. Archbishop Corleone, a 56-year-old native of San Diego, was an auxiliary bishop in that diocese from 2002 until his 2009 appointment as Bishop of Oakland. The Archbishop will be installed as the ninth Archbishop of San Francisco at the Cathedral of St. Mary of the Assumption, October 4th, the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi, patron of the Archdiocese. And finally in the news, a new Knights of Columbus Marist poll conducted July 9th through July 11th has found that nearly 8 in 10 Americans say they are frustrated with the tone in politics today and nearly three quarters of Americans say that campaigns have become more negative over the years. The Knights released the results July 26th and in response to the survey, they have launched a national nonpartisan initiative to give voice to Americans' desire for civility in public discourse. Supreme Knight Carl Anderson said in a statement that the American people want and deserve civility and they want conversation on the issues rather than personal attacks. The initiative will be featured in full-page national newspaper ads to encourage readers to sign an online petition at civilityinamerica.org. The first ad appeared in the July 26th issue of USA Today. They are also on Facebook at facebook.com slash civilityinamerica. Well, that is all the information we have for you this time. Please stay with Catholic TV for more Catholic news. Until then, I'm Kevin Nelson, and I'll see you next time on Catholic News Break.